Hello, this is Brother Kramer from the Math Department of BYU-Idaho. And these videos are covering a lesson dealing with describing categorical data and proportions, and then sampling distribution of a sample proportion. And so the outline for these videos is as follows. First, I'm going to talk about categorical versus quantitative and look at the different graphs, graphs that we dealt with with quantitative, and then the graphs that we'll be dealing with the categorical data. Then the distribution of a sample proportion is the second item that I'll cover. And lastly, I'll cover finding probability for a distribution of sample proportions. So first of all, quantitative versus categorical, let's review in terms of the difference between the two. Quantitative is usually numerical. For instance, it could be the height of a person, body temperature, cost of new medical equipment, the number of siblings, and a typical questionnaire rating. Those are typically quantitative. Rare occasion when something is numerical that's not quantitative could be something like a telephone number or a or a jersey number, for instance, on a player. Categorical is usually non-numerical, and here are some examples where we have gender, class, and college, race, and then I have the example with the phone number. Okay. So now, here are the different types of graphs that we dealt with with quantitative. First, we use, we've used histograms before, and also we've dealt with box plots as well. Okay. Now, with categorical data analysis, there's three different types of graphs. There are pie charts, okay, and so, that, so each of the different categories are represented by each of the slices. A bar graph, where we have each bar represents a category, and a Pareto chart, which is basically a bar graph, but it's sorted basically in ascending order. The most frequent category is the first cat is the first represented by the first bar and then so on and so forth. Okay. So then with categorical versus quantitative data, quantitative data we dealt with that in unit two. And the main parameter of interest for the population was mu or the population mean. However with categorical data for unit three, the primary parameter of interest for the pop for the population is P or the population proportion. So the start of this unit will look at data that has two categories, those observations that have a certain characteristic and those that do not. Okay? So now let's talk about the distribution of a sa of sample proportion. Okay? So with quant let's compare and contrast the difference between a distribution of sample means with quantitative data on the left and the distribution of a sample proportion with categorical data on the right. Now we'll I'll compare and contrast each bullet point. Parameter of interest for the population for quantitative data is mu, or the population mean. On the right, with categorical data, the parameter of interest for the population is p, or the population proportion. The statistic to estimate mu, or population mean, is based on the sample, which is x bar, or the sample mean. And the statistic on the right for categorical data to estimate p based on the sample is p hat, or the sample proportion. Now, how we calculate p hat is basically x divided by n, where x is the number of individuals with a certain characteristic. Say, for instance, we wanted to see who would vote for President Obama in a general election, and we took a sample of 1,000. And out of that sample, about 502 say that they would vote for Obama. x would be 502. That's the number of individuals with a certain characteristic, the characteristic being who would vote for Obama. And n is our total sample size, which is 1,000. Now, finally, the last bullet point kind of comparing x bar has a sampling distribution, so the distribution of sample means, but also p hat has a sampling distribution, the distribution of all possible sample proportions. So this distribution on the left represents the distribution of sample means of all possible sample means, and over the right is distribution of all possible sample proportions. Okay, let's go further with the comparison. The distribution of x bar on the left versus the distribution of p hat on the right. The mean of the sample means is just the population mean. If you go down here, the center is the population mean. The mean of the sample proportions is just p. So if you see here on the bottom right, the graph here shows that the mean of all the, distri of the distribution of all possible sample proportions is just p. The standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is the, the standard deviation from the parent population divided by the square root of n. But the standard deviation with categorical data, with dealing with sample proportions, standard deviation of the sam of for sample proportions is the population proportion times when minus the population proportion divided by n, and then that's all square rooted. We can also get a z-score from each of these distributions. The z-score, this is the second z-score you ever saw in this course, where we take x bar minus mu, which is our sample mean divided by our population mean, 
divided by sigma, which is our population standard deviation over the square root of our sample size, which is n. Z now, what we'll be using, we'll have another z score where we take our sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by this whole thing here, which is the standard deviation. But notice here with each of those, if you look at both z scores, we take something from our sample, x bar or p hat, minus something from our population, which is either mu, our population mu, or p, which is our population proportion. And then with both of those, we divide it by a standard deviation. This is the standard deviation for means, and this is the standard deviation for proportions. Okay? So now the, what I'll do is, is that I will stop the video, and I'll continue with the last item, which is finding probabilities per distribution of sample proportions in part two of these videos.